Welcome back to Medrash Umaisa, sharing a story for this week's Parsha, Parsha's Bo. This story was told by Rav Gamliel Rabinovich Shlit, who heard it from the Bala Maisa, Rav Chaim Tzvi Solomon, who eventually made it to Eretz Yisrael and told him this story. As a young man, young Chaim Hirsch was a Talmud in the famous yeshiva in the Transylvania Hungaria region of Sekelid, where the Rav of the city and the Rosh Yeshiva, Rav Yehuda Sego Rosner, Hashem Yikom Domo, was greatly beloved by his Talmidim, and Chaim Hirsch was very close to him. One day, he was forwarded a letter from his home that he had been called to serve in a labor camp. At that point, the Nazis and their Hungarian collaborators set up labor camps where young men were being taken to work. His Rav gave him a bracha and asked him to please remember and promise to never forget his kesher to HaKadosh Baruch Hu the entire time. And in that tzchus, he said, he would be able to survive. He kept his promise and remained steadfast in his emuna, and even managed to smuggle tefillin into that camp and the succeeding camps that he went to, even letting other Jews put on those tefillin throughout the war. When he finally got out of the camps, he returned to his town, as so many Jews did, and found that everything had been wiped out. His entire family had been killed. When he discovered this, he sat on a rock near his what was his home and was crying bitterly. Suddenly he heard the barking of a dog getting closer and closer. He looked up and he saw a dog running towards him. He recognized that dog. His family were wealthy. They had a large home and estate. And that dog was the guard dog that used to protect them. The dog came running over to him, barking enthusiastically, and put his paws on Chaim Hirsch's chest. Chaim Hirsch greeted the dog and was about to walk off, but the dog again chased after him, put his feet on his chest, and then started to move off in another direction. Chaim Hirsch understood that the dog wanted him to follow. He followed the dog out of the town into the woods, and the dog kept looking back to him, barking, wanting him to follow, until he reached a certain place and stopped. The dog then began digging in the earth with his paws. Chaim Hirsch realized that he was supposed to dig. He took whatever implement he could find and started digging as well. He dug and dug. He didn't find anything and he wanted to go away. But the dog again barked frantically and brought him back. He continued to dig and then he felt metal. He cleared the earth and he found a small metal box. In that metal box was something that had pained him so much. His family were the guardians of a very special Sefer Torah, a very ancient Sefer Torah that had belonged to many tzaddikim in the past. It was known for having a beautiful ksav and always looked as if it had just been written. And the loss of that Sefer Torah was something that really pained him. Here he found the Sefer Torah again. He was delighted and was about to walk off. But again, the dog didn't let him go and kept barking and digging. He began to dig again and found another box. This box was full of money and valuables. Apparently his father had hid his valuables there before he was taken to the camp. Chaim Hirsch was able to use that money to reestablish himself over there and then eventually to make it to Eretz Yisrael. When he reestablished himself in the town, some of the non-Jewish townspeople told him what had happened at the end of his father's life. The Nazis had dragged him to the family home and said that they knew he was wealthy. They searched the home. They didn't find money. They wanted to know where the money was. His father kept saying that he had sent the money away, that he had no money left. They started to beat him, and then suddenly the family dog came racing in and attacked the Nazi soldiers. The Nazis weren't intimidated by dogs. They used them all the time, and they tried to calm the dog down, but that didn't work here, and the dog bit them and attacked them. Eventually, they tried to shoot the dog, but he managed to escape, and they, wounded from the bites of the dog, went off and left his father where he was. That dog protected that treasure for Chaim Hirsch to be able to find it. Amazingly, a few days after he found that treasure, the dog died. In this week's parsha, the Pesach tells us, The dogs in Mitzrayim didn't bark at Bnei Yisrael. 
that was an expression of their loyalty, the meter of the dogs, to Bnei Yisrael, the chosen people of Hashem. In Chaim Hirsch's case, it was by barking that the dog expressed his loyalty and was that messenger of Hashem's protection of the survivor of that family, Chaim Hirsch, and that special Sefer Torah that he brought to Eretz Yisrael. Sometimes dogs fulfill their mission by remaining silent, and sometimes they fulfill that mission by barking. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful Shabbos.